part 5 and turn 7 and so far it's looking pretty good. I haven't done this yet in the campaign, taking a bird's eye view of the campaign map but this big green chunk here is ours. So for turn 7 that's pretty decent and also we have this red blob here, Tao Ying, that's the remnants of Tao Qian and that's as good as ours. Or at least it will be, hopefully, by the end of this part. So, I was describing Tao Qian as being the main antagonist. And I was also describing Dong Zhao as being the main antagonist, I noticed. But what I meant by main antagonist for Tao Qian is that he is the initial dilemma that Cao Cao faces as a faction because he's the local rival. Like, of course, the stuff I was describing about killing Cao Cao's shitty dad it's Tao Chan that's supposed to do that. He's supposed to be the main headache at the early stage of the campaign for local dominance of the surrounding area. So, yeah, that's what I meant by main antagonist. If I was talking about the actual main antagonist, like the actual strategic diplomatic rival, of course, that would be Dong Zhao, who I also described as the main antagonist. He is, yeah, minus 60 personal rivalry, so... He's the main antagonist, really. Tao Qian is just a bit part small time chump who is about to be totally subsumed. Like at this point, we've captured two of his presumably three generals, family generals. So we've got Zhang Ba and I think it's Che Zhuan that you pronounce that like. So we've pretty much annexed them. Like we've got all of his and celeries apart from military instructor, we've captured all of his fucking cabinet. We've got his city, his capital. So all, all that's left to do is attack here. And before I do that, some corrections or clarifications. So the proper pronunciation of Marquis, it seems to be the case that the original etymology is of course Marquis in all cases. And the only exception really to that as being the acceptable pronunciation as in England, where for some reason, it might be similar to the word lieutenant, they've decided to adopt their own fucking pronunciation and just confuse everyone, especially the other people in Britain like me. So yeah, I have, I've heard Marquis before and I thought it must have been correct usage, but it just seems to be English usage basically. So yeah, I would never say Marquis. I'm gonna just, I'm only ever gonna say Marquis for now on. Glad to finally have that clarified. And also, uh, I was making a mistake here and saying Yellow River in reference to this river that winds its way south of Chen, our starting position. This is the fucking Yangtze, I don't know why I was saying that. I knew that, so yeah, that was weird. Don't know what I was thinking, can't remember. Uh, might have been the historical battles that confused me at some point, because one of them is fought on a river. So this is the Yellow River up here. And the Yellow Sea, of course, that separates China and Korea. So, this here is the fucking Yellow River. I don't like misinforming people. So I'll always take my time to correct shit like that. And this here is the Yangtze, right? Something else that I actually did fuck up on. So, I was saying that Liu Bei is meant to, s to relocate down here and start up again when he gets ousted out of the northeast of China, but... What actually happens is he takes territory and moves south to where I think I am right now, Donghai. So he takes this area and then he seems to disappear because I was going based on time lapses I'd seen of the Three Kingdoms and the control of territory. And I remember definitely that I saw Liu Bei creeping south. So I just assumed that seeing as Liu Bei is one of the Three Kingdoms, eventual Three Kingdoms, he must have been the one to end up down here, but nope. What happens is, Sun Su, I think, conquers down here, and then Sun Quan takes over, and then they found the Kingdom of Wu. So, it's actually the Suns that fucking take over the southeast, and Liu Bei ends up resettling down here, and forming the Shu Han to eventually compose the other of the final of the three kingdoms so yeah i made a mistake there 
Liu Bei ends up here. So if I was to try and be historically accurate, I would have to try and get Liu Bei to end up down here. It's about much. So eventually it might be the case that Sun Quan and Liu Bei end up reversed, flipped, which would be acceptable, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so that's all the clarification. Now we have to deal with Tao Ying here, so... So this is actually like a really good start, this is pretty fucking good, as I was saying, with taking this entire chunk. This is a decent chunk of China already, and it's only like seven turns in, so... Yeah, pretty much crushing it. With only like small armies of cavalry marauding around, we're managing to win all these really decisive victories and taking territories. So yeah, just got to wipe out Tao Qian now. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna march with Xiao Dun. He's the one that marches. And then demand surrender. Nah, they never accept that. There are circumstances where I've seen that be accepted, but this is not one of them. And then before I attack, I'm gonna make this guy the commander because I want him to pick up XP and I'm gonna make him the administrator because I need I need a strategist that's gonna be leading on the field because I'm gonna have a strategist in every army just about or I will have one in this one so I need to be using heroic victories on this guy to request aid so he's the only one in this army that has a full request aid so he's the one that has to be leading to get those heroic victories so that's how it's gonna be and I need to put him in my cabinet now so 10% income from commerce and reduced construction cost and the commercial town is that would be this one no wait 120 base here and this one is going to be built up as well, so yeah, Dong Hai. So we have an administrator, and then I can request aid, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to request aid with him for 1,600 immediately, and then I might have to remove this guy from office here and put Lady Bayan in charge at some point. Don't need to do that right now though. So now we've got this guy as an administrator, increasing income by 15% from all sources. So we want to we want to just stack income. He's reducing corruption, reducing construction cost, marginal increase to population, marginal increase to commercial income. So yeah, this is all good incidental bonuses. So it's going to be cheaper to upgrade this shit, and we're going to get more money from it when we do. So not bad. This place is yielding. A gross income of 430. So that's a net income. Expenditure is 60. So that's a net income of like, a, it says net income 430 there and then there's expenditure and then it shows, shows the total, what the fuck. That's a shitty way to portray it. Alright, so let's deal with these fuckers here. We've got a night battle, oh, fuck yeah. So there's a standard garrison there for a farm, there's Three units of spears and a unit of archers. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this situation with Zhu Miao because Miao Miao, because he's he's not a particularly good strategist, and with Cao Cao, I would like to synergize him with a very good strategist like the one that we're going to hopefully be getting, Gojia. So I might have to recall this guy and his retinue. Oh, and we've got a thunderstorm. Nice. There's the moon. Shit is bright. So, they're going to be in the trees, I think. They're going to be sitting on a hill. I don't know how the fire arrows are going to be affected by the rain here. And the thunder and the lightning. So I've got three units of skirmishers. Finally we have skirmishers. So far in this campaign, I've been dominating with cavalry, but we finally have some skirmishers we can utilize, complement our cavalry with. So we can hopefully play off these guys. So the archers, first of all, I happen to quite like 
skirmishers in this game. So cavalry, I think, are the dominant force on the battlefield. Then I think it's skirmishers, and then after that it's infantry right at the bottom. In terms of the rock, paper, scissors triangle. So we've got two types of skirmishers here, and they're quite similar, but they have different usages. So archer militia, they are really cheap, and they're good against the units that tend to give cavalry trouble. Not so much me, but you're supposed to use archers to take out these polearm carrying infantry that don't have a free hand for a shield. And that polearm also means that they're a danger to our cavalry, so it's a good complementary arrangement that we have. So, especially that G captain, like, see if I can hit the G captain with uh, archers, archer militia. That's a good use of them. And then we have crossbows, which have slightly higher range, 10%, and higher armor piercing at the cost of mainly just less ammo. So they shoot away their munitions faster, but they do more damage in that time, especially against armor, like this guy. He's the only real threat right now. Just got to not let our bodyguards get harassed by the archer unit and stop their champion from charging us and we should be right here. So I'm just going to have my skirmishers fire at their desired targets. With crossbows you tend to use them differently from archer militia. They cost more, they're 50% more expensive and they're more for I would say sniping high value targets because they they don't ignore armor but they negate it quite a lot so what I want to do I think is use crossbows to take out shot cavalry or champions. Things that would give my cavalry a problem before the main battle begins. Like they're wasted on G militia because they don't really have any armor. Yeah I don't like that they're in the forest here that's kind of giving me problems. I'm gonna move in my saber cavalry because they only have one eight of archers and I want to try and provoke them, bait them out here. I want to charge down their archer unit. I really don't like doing this thing that people tend to do out of habit where you just have your archers fire at their archers and then your archers cancel each other out. That is so pussified. That's such a massive capitulation. I mean, at least go for a hard counter for fuck's sake. And yeah, look at that. They just counter charged me with Tao Ying, the bastards. So I'm going to try and get around them now. Fire at will, I'm going to leave on with Marcher Militia just because if they just fire off their ammo, they'll tend to do quite well. And I've got quite a lot of their units being baited now, so I've got the chasing Sao So I've got all their G split up quite well. And I've got yeah, I should just I should just fire it well with my crossbows, fuck it. Infantry captain are the priority with those. I don't want to let anything get charged off this fucking bodyguard. Alright, so the archers are scattered already. Uh, I need to get this guy away from that bodyguard, man. I'm just taking that charge. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did we get it? Yeah, that's perfect. Take that any day. I don't think it matters if this guy dies. So what happened there is we got a free charge and then we can sandwich with Dune. And that's pretty much ideal, I think. So this fight is not going to go the way I would usually want where I'll leave all the bodyguards behind because we've got their general about to rout, maybe even die. Uh, probably not going to get his... Oh yeah, there we go. Probably impossible to get the ancillary off him, which is kind of sad. Uh, and I've got two full units of spears coming down on top of me now. And yeah, that's that's acceptable. Marginal losses there. So we took out a champion with slight losses. Sweet. And now I'm gonna surround the spear unit. And I'm gonna whittle down the infantry captain, that's fucking perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna just chase him with the Saber Cavalry. Gonna have Dune run into that unit. Pull them off. So 
So I've got Dune holding this shit in place. And then, oh man, are they charging my... Oh no, was that bad? Yeah, that was bad, I think. Shit. I think part of that got reflected. God damn it. And these units... Yeah, they get wrecked, so... They should be about to break, I think. I think I got a partial charge reflection there on Sao Sao. Fuck, that was... That was dodgy. I can, I think, route... Yeah, I need to get this fight over with so my Saber Militia doesn't take a lot of losses. And... come on, come on, come on. Yeah, that should do it. What the f... Oh man, did they rally? What the fuck? Bastards. Alright, well that's it. I'm bothered about that charge reflect. Did pretty well there. Uh, is he dead? Nah, he's not dead. Okay, good. So, maybe we can capture him. I think it's 0% chance to capture him, but who knows. So, no losses on the skirmishers there, so that means that there's no replenishment that needs to happen. We shot the shit out of the infantry captain with these units, and they did alright for what their cost. Like, they, they fired all their ammo pretty much, apart from the crossbows, and got some decent kills on some chunky units there, so not bad. That charge, that fucking reflected charge on Sao Sao though, that was dodgy. And uh, I think, oh, this unit has eight men left, what the fuck? Yeah, I must have taken my eye off that fight then. So I think I told them to charge down a unit that had routed and then they got charge reflected when the unit rallied. Good enough though. So yeah, he's dead. Did we get his... Nah, didn't even get that salary fuck. So we lost a hundred there. It was the trees, I couldn't manoeuvre properly or bait right. So we've got... Sao Sao rank 6, holy fuck. That's pretty decent. Already rank 6 on turn 7, fucking hell. So what can we get here? I think this is... I think I've been overlooking this, so... That redeployment cost if character is Prime Minister or or Faction Leader. If we had three commanders doing this, then that would be minus 75% deployment cost, redeployment cost. And also there's... What's it called? There's... Oh yeah, that's something else I was getting wrong. So this is... Tunshin Conscription. Don't know why I was saying Tuntian. I think that's because of Tiananmen Square. <laughs> so that's Tunshin Conscription, and this has the effect of... Minus 8% redeployment cost, faction-wide. So if we have 12 of these, redeployment cost will be reduced by 96%. Or if we just have 3 of these, along with 3 commanders up here with minus 25%, then I think that means that we can redeploy shit for free. And I think redeployment will end up being really important later on. Especially if we can have really good mustering rates. So, redeployment means that we can recall from anywhere on the map and then redeploy anywhere else. So it's like being able to teleport our armies with a short cooldown period. So yeah, that's that's something that could end up being really useful. Because that means that much fewer armies need to be fielded to achieve the same goals because you can then be offensive and defensive with the same armies, so yeah, that could end up being really useful. Minus 25% redeployment cost, and that can be expensive as fuck. Like, see for this, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, like 5,000 to redeploy all this shit, but if we reduce it by 25% three times, that's down to about 1,000, so yeah, that's really good. But I don't think I'm gonna get that yet, I'm gonna go for... No, wait, should I? Resolve. Yeah, the fucking commander skill tree is kind of shite. Hmm. Are you starting rank? Because that'll have a lot of utility later on. Uh, Gang Wu, what the fuck? So is this guy a Tao Qian subordinate? Han Fu? Nah, I don't know. Alright, so that's Tao Qian destroyed. Yeah, faction destroyed Tao Shang. So Tao Qian, Tao Ying, and then Tao Shang, but they don't have a town left, so 
No generals on the field, no towns left, so the faction is wiped. And we have the mission now to capture Luoyang, so... That'll give us increased peasantry income, population growth, public order, so... Yeah, I might want to send an army up there with a lot of money. And it'll cost us 8,000, I think, to... What was the term? Recolonize it, I think. Yeah, to colonize the settlement, 8,000, fuck's sake. So just to make this place functional, we have to sink 8,000. Have to put down 8,000. And we have a horse, so... Red thoroughbred. Why did we get that? What the fuck? I think for capturing that commander, we just got a horse. Increased food production. Yeah. And then the horse. So this guy is... Oh man, so that means that he's gonna have running speed, charge speed, mighty knockback, increased horse mass, increased charge bonus. So, 281 melee charge bonus with 25% 25, 25 flat charge speed for his own retinue, including him. So, yeah, we can probably just clatter right through heavy infantry now with this guy. Not that we can already, but it's pretty sweet. So, yeah, that situation here, right. Uh, what I'm thinking is put these guys in this forest and then split Sao Ren off because he doesn't have any cavalry, so he is not the primary ambition force. He is just one cavalry unit with two axes. And you would think Axe Band would be good for ambushing, you know, with Tutteberg Forest and all that crap, but nope. Cavalry all the fucking way. So, pulling this guy off, and then ambush with the tank and Lady Bayan. And then I'm going to put Lady Bayan in charge, because we need her to rank up, and then when she does, probably appoint her as the faction heir, so... Lady Bayan is hopefully going to ambush Kong Zhao, so... Declare war. And... I have separated them here, which I would not usually do, because... I'm not certain that they would have otherwise gone along this road. Because they're not expansionist, they're not aggressive, they don't have a army with, that's powerful. They have a lot of archers, they have two strategists with a lot of archers underneath them, so... His ancillaries, Tunic of Divination, and a local administrator. The one that we didn't take the opportunity to take at the start. Pure conversationalist. 15% peasant income. Not bad. So, we can maybe get these ancillaries. He has a lot of infantry. This is what I'm talking about with shitty synergy. He's a fucking strategist. And he's lugging around four units of fucking infantry that he can't buff. And this guy... Wait a minute. Does he have any traits that make him... likely to evade ambushes? Or succumb to them? Nah. So... Because all he can see right now is Sal Ren with two infantry units, and because we declared war on him, he is probably going to be tempted, I think if this works, to just charge and take me out while it can overwhelm me. But I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units of fucking cavalry hidden right there to ambush, so he's not going to get that chance. So 8 units of cavalry slamming into fucking 1, 2, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units of vulnerable infantry. Yeah. So we can match them one for one. With all their viable charge targets. Sweet. So, down here we just end turn and wipe them out, I think. And then, the follow-up. The follow-up is not a pushover, I think. They've got a decent garrison here, so they've got... Yeah, look at that garrison. Fuck, they get... They've got 11 units of infantry, and two of them are heavy, or medium. G infantry captain. And they have professional archers. Although these are depleted, so... They must have just recently upgraded this for me. 
So, win this battle on the field, move in, take out the depleted garrison that they just uh, increased by upgrading the town, upgrading the farms. So yeah, that should go well, I think. And then we'll have just hand down here. And over here we've got Leo Bay there. Oh man. If he attacked us, we would be screwed. We'd have to just hide behind our walls. So, yeah, we're not going to get attacked, I think, by Liu Bei. Oh, I could maybe proxy war. So, can I proxy war? Nah. 57, and it's going up by 9 a turn. Yeah, so in like 3 or 4 turns, we can maybe proxy war Liu Bei against one of these. That might go well. Glad I got that horse, I don't know how it happened, but... And our cavalry units here are decently replenished, so they're all over half. So we can definitely send them around to enemy units and get away with it. And I, I'm not going to appoint a Chancellor yet. I think what I will do is have Lady Bayan be the factioner and then maybe Sal Ren can be the Chancellor, but I don't know. And I think that's everything. I think I can end turn now. Oh, I forgot to move out Sal. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I think I had no movement range left anyway, so... Oh, and we succeeded. Fucking hell. Superior forces crushing defeat. What the fuck? Look at these capture chances. 66%. Where's theirs? I mean, it's us that are fucking attacking. Was that 2,400 that I saw? So if we just go by the initial armies, we're outnumbered. Seven or eight to one once again. Alright, this should be one hell of a fucking ambush. I really like the ambushes on 3k. Especially with the state of cavalry. Ooh, look at that fucking column. That column is long. Alright, so they've got three units of archers at the back of the column. There's the exit point. They've got two units of archers at the front. So I'm gonna just take them one for one, I think, with Sabre, Cavalry, Militia. So I've got three units here. I'm gonna have this one hit from that side. And that should stop them. Wait a minute, no, no. I want to hit them from here first to break the column up and then slam in with these two from the high ground capitalize on the disarray and then we've got two units of spears, two units of swords, spears encased by the swords in the middle of the column, uh, two archer units at the front I want to definitely charge down quickly, then I'll have these ones at this side and then I think the heavy cavalry should be up here so oh that speed has went way down. Bastards! So yeah, two heavy cavalry in the trees at the, the corner of the column. So they have a lot of targets to pick from. Should have some shit down here though, fuck. Alright, gonna have gonna have two units down. Yeah, right. So Lady Bayan can charge the archers down. I think I'm gonna try and leave the middle of the column. Don't want to take that fight. And there's reinforcements there. Fucking hell three minutes before they arrive in so they were coming here to attack them but they're not even going to be here for another three minutes and then when they do arrive if the fight is even still going on it will be a death warrant for them <laughs> all right let's fucking go then so here's the plan starting with this unit come on then march oh yeah here we go here we go. Here we go. And they're fucked. Two units of archers there. What is he doing? What is Kong, Zap, Kong Zhao trying? Yeah, look at that. So they're firing their arrows ineffectually. That's not gonna do shit. I'm taking these charges. Getting away from there. I think we might have taken some losses. Yeah, I'm, I'm committing with everything here. I should have taken that unit. Wait, I still can. 
And the two spear units, I've got to watch out for them. What are they chasing? Are they chasing anything? What the fuck? Don't think so. Spear units, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Route that fucker. Kong Zhao might die. I don't want him to. I want to get his ancillaries. Tunic of Divination, local administrator. Give me that shit. Oh, they're disappearing into the trees. I can't let that get the better of me. Nope. And we're chasing them down, guys. Yep. Oh, get the fuck. Get the fuck away. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, and they've made it off the field, so Kong Zhao was away, I think. I think he's routed. Which is good. Oh, and there's a unit of spears over there in the trees. And I need to, I need to have my lancers get around and commit to that. So, I've pulled them away from the spears. And I just get charging down now. And there's a unit of saber militia there, which I'm just charging them down. And then it's just two units of spears. And in a minute, we'll have. Sal Ren arrive, but it'll be too late by then. And the unit of swords should route. Ah, uh, is he dead? Is he dead? Oh, he's not dead, he's down to the last man who's still alive. Holy shit. Get away, get away, get away. Oh, I need to split up these bodyguards and start getting some effective charges out. Shit. Fuck, I'm charging that shit. And I'm pulling these sabers around in case I can use them in this fight. Oh no no, they turned, they turned. Are they all gonna route? Nope, nope, nope. Oh, we did it, alright, so. Alright, no charge reflect, come on, come on, come on. And they're dead. Not bad. We did not take many losses at all there, that was fucking sweet. 488 kills on those lancers, fucking hell. Yep, shot cavalry can have a use. We took out the archers really quickly. And whatever arrows they loosed were not at anything except sabers. And here he comes. After the battle's over. It's too late. The base chuffed. They came to fucking wreck him. They thought they could catch him on his own. And instead, he's arriving to witness the aftermath of their complete and utter fucking demise. Sweet. So that's Kong Zhao pretty much fucking wrecked. Oh, look at those kills. Only this unit of G militia did anything. Everything else just got swarmed and wiped. I want fear effect on the tank. Yeah, look at that. Those kills. Oh man. Yeah, the shot cavalry were deployed well there. Got to use their charge bonus without exposing them to their weakness, to arrows. What? Did he die? What the fuck? He should not have died. Hmm. 300 income or 4% replenishment. Well, 25 times 300 is about 8,000, so it's not worth it for 100% replenishment at 8,000, so I'm taking the fucking money. Yep, not bad. Uh, oh, fucking finally. Gogia and also Lu Fan, who I happen to like. Lu Fan. This guy is rank 3 and he has a unique background, which means 100% income bonus from Silk and Spice, which is really good if you're going to be playing as, who would it be? Mateng, because he's surrounded by. Silk, so yeah, if you're playing as Mateng and you can get this guy in this candidate pool and then put him as the factionaire, you'll double your income from Silk and you can take all of the Silk territories on the map as Mateng immediately. So that's part of why I was considering playing as Mateng. He's over here and there's Silk, and with Lu Fan, you can make an extra one or two thousand a turn <laughs> just from that character. That's an example of the most extreme synergy. Not that early in the game, I would say. So, yeah. In the next part, I'm going to be recruiting this fucking guy because he is the first of the legendary characters, the unique legendary characters that you always want to be getting. He's got 50% extra ammo for his retinue, so 
That's like 50% more kills for bow units, or even trebuchets. So 50% increase in potential effectiveness of ranged units if they're under this guy's command. Not to mention all of his special abilities like extra damage for archers, that kind of thing, which you can pick in his skills. So yeah, this guy's really good and I'll be recruiting him and then hopefully we get opportunities to get even more. But that's it for now. To be continued. If you like what I'm doing here and want more of it, you can support me on my Patreon. Thanks to all patrons, with a special thanks to Matteo Olivetti and Nerdington.